Two Iraqis came here to this country, were radicalized. For that terror attack overseas. Total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States. First of all, we should develop detention centers for them. Everywhere there is a sign of the sign Assalamu alaikum. Welcome, boys and girls, and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. to another riveting, educational, engaging, and enlightening episode of Raw Islam with Imam Azhar. We are back again tonight, two weeks in a row. It's starting to become a habit. Let's hope we can keep it up, inshallah. We are back tonight with another episode, another question of the week, and we are here to engage with you guys to share and educate and i totally lost my rhythm so with that ladies and gentlemen please welcome the hardest working imam that i know imam azhar <sighs> uh, peace be upon all our listeners thank you once again carl for that uh introduction and we want to welcome our listeners from across the globe on facebook live and on the podcast who are streaming it downloading it and as Carl said, two weeks in a row, and we are hoping that we continue with this level of consistency that every week we're engaging with you, our listeners, on topics which matter to you and our society and our world. The goal is simple. By explaining the Islamic perspective on certain matters and issues, we want to strengthen our resolve to make the world a better place. So Carl, I want to begin by asking you, we had... Uh, proposed to our listeners last week to engage with us in a question pertaining to the topic of discussion, and that was, where do you feel safe? And I want to pose that question to you, Carl. Where do you feel safe? So what I will say to that is, it's actually really a, 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 per, it's a personal struggle for me because, you know, as I was actually writing the text for last week's show, I got thinking about it. And when I was younger, mm -hmm. like in high school, the thing to do was to go hang out at the movies. We'd go to the movies on Friday night, Saturday night, whatever. That was what we did. But then that thing out West with the Batman movie can't happen. Mm -hmm. And so movies maybe aren't safe anymore. Mm -hmm. And then you think you're going to go to school. Well, we know schools aren't really safe anymore. Mm -hmm. And then you think, you know, the, the last bastion of hope, I'm going to go to my place of worship. Mm -hmm. now, that's not a thing anymore either. Because mm -hmm. this is, as I was doing the research for the write-up, it's not... Just the, the the thing that happened in Texas isn't a first time thing. This has happened regularly. Yeah, it's not. And this is a, this is becoming the new norm, unfortunately. So, I and you know, and the second layer to this huh? is as the white convert in uh -huh. in the age of Islamophobia. Uh -huh. The, the the side eye and the looks that I get going to the mosque uh -huh. don't really feel comfortable. I, I feel safe, not comfortable, but safe. So uh -huh. I, I got nothing on that one. I don't even know what to tell you. And, and you know, um, as we um, await our listeners and their answers, um, we have to remember that where you feel safe means that there's not a time within that event, within that engagement, that you have to think about watching your back. You have to consider, is everything okay in my surroundings? It could be as innocent as running around in the park or even driving up and down the streets. Um, it, it's, it's a sad reality. And Carl, you said it's becoming the new norm. And realistically speaking, yes, it is. What's frightening is that 
in the days of the 90s and the late 80s and the early 2000s, movies would depict things that we would just laugh off and like they're talking about the future and the instability and certain types of military engagements and so on and so forth. And you're like, you know what? It's good for Hollywood. But never in a million years would I have thought that that would start becoming the reality on the ground. And unfortunately, the reality is, yes, it is. So I too can mimic your concerns by saying that I can't recall a place or a time uh, throughout my travels or movements, even um, in my own neighborhood, where you would feel safe. Uh, and that's something that I think we need to start asking that simple question. Why are we not feeling safe in a world that we feel should be safe? And I say that because we're not living in times where security measures aren't already in place, where there's alarms and street cameras and sophisticated systems that would serve as a deterrent for someone to do something stupid. I was in New York uh, two weeks ago and uh, it was the day before um, the marathon, the New York marathon. It was amazing to see people from different countries uh, around Times Square on Saturday night as he prepared for the marathon on Sunday. And it was, um, it was very beautiful to see them on Monday evening as they were flying back home to their respective countries with their medals on um, that even at that time, you look around and there's cameras that the NYPD has placed on streets, street corners. Uh, there was uh, sophisticated measures from radiation detectors on cops. And, but despite all that, we are still living in fear. So again, that's a question that we put out to our listeners last week. As we continue to get those answers, we will engage with you individually and, of course, on our show but today, Carl, we want to move forward to our next topic and engage our listeners once again with another question, and that is uh, Thanksgiving. So it's the time of Thanksgiving, Carl. And, you know, what is Thanksgiving known for you? When I say Thanksgiving or when you hear Thanksgiving, what comes to mind? Food. Lots and lots and lots and lots of food and pies and brownies and and it's really it's a lot of the sweets because I do have a sweet tooth and I have to wash what I eat. But food, yeah, a lot of food. I actually just came back um, a few uh, an hour and a half ago from the groceries, and uh, it's it's havoc in 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 the grocery stores and on the roads. People are driving like they have to get to that turkey before it jumps out of the oven, and uh, <laughs> they're picking up things like never before. But Carl, you know of thanksgiving i want us today to talk about giving thanks and what giving thanks truly means because in islam there's a lot of emphasis placed on the importance of shukr and shukr means gratitude and to do shukr of allah to be grateful to allah is a part and parcel of what it means to be a muslim no Muslim should go about their day without expressing gratitude to their Lord for the immense blessings that Lord has bestowed upon the person to the extent that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said every day, every morning that the son of Adam wakes up, he has to give a charity for each and every part of his body. It enumerates 360. And the way it goes about giving like charity is one, removing something harmful from the street is one, praying uh, extra prayers is one. There's so many different ways of expressing that gratitude. But, you know, if I was to ask myself a simple question, did I express gratitude to the Lord today? At 360, I'll fall short. So in a world today where the norm, is, especially here in America in this week, that uh, people are engaging with their families and relatives, some who are seeing each other after a year or more, and they are celebrating or thanksgiving. What should it mean, especially in the world that we live in today, Carl? What do you think giving thanks should mean? 
not just on a Muslim perspective or an Islamic perspective, but on a general perspective? So for me, on a general perspective, and, and this is the big joke in my house is that I'm Debbie Downer because mm-hmm. you, you know, I work for a nonprofit during the day. So whenever anybody goes, Oh, I'm so hungry. I'm starving. It's like, no, there are people actually starving in this world and people like, Oh, I hate my life. Yeah. You know, there are people living in caves because they don't have a house anymore because whatever happened, you know? And, and so I, I'm the Debbie Downer. So mm-hmm. I know the definition of being thankful. And while a lot of what we face and a lot of what we deal with is what the, what you'd hashtag first world problems, Mm -hmm. we have so much to be thankful for. We have, you know, our families gathering around the tables with us. There are some Syrian refugees that aren't going to have that this year. There, We have food that we're going to put on our table. Alhamdulillah. There are some people that aren't going to be able to eat, not just t- Thursday and Friday, but the, the Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. We have so much to be thankful for that we have to say Alhamdulillah on a regular basis. And, and Carl, you know... Um... Sometimes the essence of a celebration or a festivity or an occasion may be lost in the what we call in Arabic lawazimat. Lawazimat means the side things, like the condiments. You have a hot dog or a burger. The main thing that makes a hot dog or a burger is the beef, the meat, and the bun, right? But then you get caught up with the onions, the ketchup, the relish, the tomatoes, whatever you're going to put on it, mustard. Cheese, French fries. Right? And and what happens is the burger is lost in translation. I want us to talk today about how it's possible that in a world that's so advanced, progressing, people are making money like they never made before. Granted that someone's only making 20000 24000 and it's difficult to come by uh, in the world that we live in today. And I'm not going to underplay that. That is true. We are uh, suffering from rising expenditures and stabilizing or falling incomes. But in, in, in comparison to previous times, people are kind of better off than they were. That we have more more resource food in the grocery stores. I don't know if you recall, Carl, we used to go to the shopping with our father in the 80s. And if you went late on Sunday, there was no more eggs, there was no more milk, there was no more bread. And sometimes it would come in after a day or two. Nowadays, you are stockpiled with eggs and milk. You can, you, you really can't go there and find those shelves empty. Seldomly they're empty. When we had the hurricane in Texas, um, I spoke to one of the grocery store chains here, and they told me that they shipped from their, I don't know how many million square footage warehouse, they shipped everything out because the need was in those areas to try to meet those needs. Then, of course, we got hit by the hurricane, and then people were shipping back to us. So that's a logistic game. At that time, despite the hurricane hitting us, and grocery stores opening up two or three days later, some earlier, some much later than that, There, the shelves had something. And in those days, the shelves, you know, even if it was a good day, there was no winter storm, everything is hunky-dory and fine, there is a great probability that you're not going to find on the shelf what you went for. Saying that, despite all that we have done in advancements in technology and medicine and and uh, in genetically modified organisms and foods and and all the stuff that we've done we have a spike in hunger we have a spike in poverty we have people who are cringing because they know if that pension check or that food stamp or those government benefits don't come in They don't even have $500 on their name that will allow them to get through that month. So most Americans, regardless if they see it or not, I don't care if they're driving a Jaguar, BMW, or a Kia, 
Sorrento or uh, a Kia Sonata. People are really living hand to mouth. That's what they're doing. Some are living hand to month, hand to mouth with this uh, fantasy that they're the richest people. And some are living knowing that it's a matter of one domino tipping and everything will fall. So, Carl, the reason I'm discussing this is it's a time to give thanks. We're buying so much food, which is great. We're inviting family or we're going over to families that's much more better than the first. We're going to eat together, which I think is the best. But there's so much we're wasting. There is so much that's going to go in the fridge and go into trash. I want us to consider this year in Thanksgiving, in the spirit of Thanksgiving. Why not invite strangers and neighbors or people that you know over? Because realistically, some people may look pretty fine when they're at workplaces, but only they and their God and their family know when they get home, what's the situation on the table. So by inviting people, we are going to ensure that no food is left wasted. And at the same time, we will ensure that another stomach or two were full. Number two, the Black Friday phenomenon, which has killed us You know, it literally has killed us that even Canada, a country that's not even celebrating Thanksgiving this week, is a fall on has fell onto this Black Friday craze. And England, and England, they're acting, I think, as worse as we are when those doors of Best Buy and Walmart open. It's like you're running for life, and in doing so, many people potentially get injured, and some have in the past, even those few, have lost their life. So the question is, how does giving thanks verbally coincide with our actions of greed? And and with that, Carl, I want to give you, and I know I'm talking a lot today, but I want to give you the dimension in Islam about greed and gratitude. I've spoken about this for the last three weeks, so I'm going to repeat it again here. Uh, because I've been preaching this at the mosques in my different seminars, especially my mental health and Islam seminar, that a human being is a composition of a body and a soul. The body in Islam, we believe, is made from dirt. And the soul, we believe, is a divine command. Both of our parts that make us whole have needs. Our body has needs, and that is, of course, food, water, shelter, clothing, and the whole nine yards. And if you look at it, if you're listening to this podcast right now or you're watching on Facebook Live, look around your house right now. Everything that's around you or wherever you are right now, it's all from the dirt. The building, the houses, the cars, the food, the tablecloths, everything came from dirt. It's from the elements of the earth. As for the soul, it has needs also. And those needs are fulfilled from divine command. So body needs are fulfilled from dirt. The needs of the soul are fulfilled from divine submission. So giving gratitude is actually nourishing your soul. Being thankful is nourishing your soul. Worshipping, meditating, it's nourishing your soul. As for eating, um, clothing yourself, finding uh, a place to sleep is serving your body. But there's a very big difference here. The body, Carl, if you become accustomed to giving it more, it will only want more. And the soul, the consistency in what you give it, it will never demand more. Rather, it will allow you to slowly decline what you're giving it and make that wholesome. So it's like going from like a a full protein meal to two protein bars for the soul. It's giving you the same the same amount, but in a different way. Where the body, something becomes uh, a, 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 an, an idea, a wish, a desire, and then it becomes something you do customary, and then it becomes a want, and then and it becomes I have to, and then it becomes it's not fair if I don't get it. So the body is really greedy in nature. Because it just wants, but the soul in the body creates the equal balance where both are getting what they want 
without overconsuming or without indulging more. In, in a world of consumerism and constant advertisements of what's the latest phone, what's the latest device, what's the latest trend in clothing, people have this desire for more. And if you don't cap on that with gratitude, you're just going to go out there and keep on swiping those credit cards or installing the chips into those machines, racking up those bills, and then saying to yourself, well, I just need to pay this and move forward. And that's exactly contrary to giving thanks. Many people have been affected this year in our country and also around the world. I think during this Thanksgiving weekend, while we're cooking food and we're spending some time with family and friends, either before or after, before the Monday uh, of next week, take out some clothing, some good clothing, and go and donate it to a homeless shelter. Take out some extra jackets or bed sheets that you don't use anymore, you've stockpiled, and go and share that with people who will have that need. There are many people living in shelters which will not have heating systems, adequate heating systems. There'll be people on the streets who will be sleeping in winter while we, while, while, while we will be complaining about uh, the high electric bills in our houses. Let's start sharing with what we have and let's start decreasing the problems that are plaguing our earth because I don't think it takes a rocket scientist to realize we got problems in our world today. No, that's very true, and and I have been blessed and lucky enough over the last week or so here to be involved with uh, several, essentially turkey distributions where organizations and groups got together and they they donated full on Thanksgiving meals, stuffing, gravy, mac and cheese, and the actual turkey itself. And I know one of the things that I, I was talking to somebody about it, and one of the things that that we that we came up with, or we came across, was that, you know, these meals when working with nonprofits and things like that, they really, they only cost like thirty or forty dollars to do, mm -hmm. to 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 produce these because a lot of the stuff is donated, and you know you're just paying for like the gas to get it from one place to the other or whatever. But these meals don't last for Thanksgiving. I don't know about your house, but my house, mm -hmm. that turkey, you're going to have turkey sandwiches on on, on, fr on Thursday evening. You're going to have them th Friday for lunch. You're going to have turkey in the mac and cheese. You're going to have turkey soup. You're going to mm -hmm. have. And so it's it's a thing in your you might be feeding a family for X amount of time. But there is so much waste. We do waste. We waste so much for no reason. And in fact, uh, uh, I'm trying to think because I, I I don't I'm I don't want to badmouth these restaurants because I the food they make I like. Mm -hmm. But I have a list of restaurants that my family I've told them these are no go restaurants. We're never going there again because there's so much waste. And, you know, while you were saying that, that some families live above their means, there are some families that can't afford that winter coat for that kid to go to school. Mm -hmm. And that kid may get sick, which is actually going to cause more problems down the line. Mm -hmm. So I like what you said about going to your closet taking an item and donating it and being thankful for what you have and not being wasteful with the blessings you have been given. And, and Carl, you know, um, all it takes is observation. It's for us to see that there's a need. I, I feel that it's the least we can do as human beings is to know our neighbors good enough to identify their well-being. You know, you will have a neighbor who is very polite and smiles and waves. And they're grateful for the fact that you've noticed them. But at the same token, there's some underlying problems that they are hiding. That over time, you may, become, you may be able to identify if we had an opportunity, Carl, to just look up. 
We're looking down when we're driving. We're looking down. We're walking in and out of the house. We're walking down when we're crossing the streets. We're walking down. We're looking down when we're in the elevator or the escalator. We can't see anymore. We're actually the walking blind. Like stop looking at your damn phone and look at the people around you. (laughs) And and the real problems are the people around us. You know, you're talking about food wastage, Carl. There are there are studies. America wastes forty percent of the food it produces. Forty percent is a staggering number. And I know on these weekends we waste more than ever. It's it's like weekends like Thanksgiving, like Christmas, like Eid, where we you know cook and we prepare large number of meals. There's nothing wrong. If you have the means, do it. But sharing is caring. Make sure not a single morsel goes into waste. Our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, taught us in Islam that food doesn't fill you up. It's the morsel in which God has put blessings that fill you up. How could you obtain that morsel? Two ways. Number one, eating together. In Islam, it's been a tradition, which is lost even in Muslim households today, that you sit together and you eat out of one plate. And uh, amazingly, I was at the university just a few days ago, and my former students were there, and uh, I told one of my fellow students, let's eat. And he goes, can I eat with you? I said, of course. We eat together in one place. Doesn't matter where the venue is. When you eat together in one plate, God puts blessing increases the blessing now what does that blessing mean you will eat a morsel in which you will say i'm satisfied so number one is eating together number two is not wasting a single grain of rice or a piece of bread even if it's the edges it doesn't matter if it's a bite of of the apple don't waste anything because blessing may be in there that will help actually make you not fill not fill you up but make you feel satisfied and content that I've I've ate something and I'm fine. And number three, call people over. More the merrier. The more people we have sharing our food with us, believe me, the food is never less. I hear from people all the time, we were scared when we were catering the food that it wouldn't be enough. And you end up seeing that there's trays and piles of food left and people are full. So always remember, the food will be there people and things will work out saying that carl i think it's important to address the underlying issue as we do pursue caring and sharing our food and uh you know sharing what we have from our wardrobe that we seldomly use or we've forgotten to use also going to our garages and storage units you know carl there's enough self-storage units in america that every single american could fit into those and there's still space in the self-storage units I'm talking about not the country. They could go into the self-storage units and stand up like human beings. They stand up and we could fill up every storage unit in this country and there's still space. Saying that, there are people who have one or two storage units where they keep things that overflow from their house. It's time to go and empty those things out and you'll find things that you don't need. Give it to people and share with them. Saying these three things, Carl, from our homes, to our storage units, to the food on our table that we share and hopefully not waste. It's imperative that we get a handle and control on ourselves when it comes to being a consumer. When we go out there to shop, even if it's Black Friday, it doesn't matter how good the deal is. If you don't need it, you don't buy it. And if you buy it and you have something similar to it, which is still in good working condition or it's in good um, wearing condition, give it to someone who can use it. Let's not hoard things up because truly we've been blessed with the law, Carl. And there's one country that I'll never forget. I've been to over 35 countries. And the one country which I'll never forget is Bangladesh. People make $5 a month, the average person out there, but you'll never see a single person coming up to you begging, saying, I want more. They've learned to live within $5 a month. And um, I think that's amazing. Not because of the currency. Yeah, you convert the currency, it comes up to maybe 400 or something, Taka. But again, just say you had to live on 
four hundred dollars for an entire month that's that's a task and the currency although it is low um in comparison to american dollars you get a lot you get more bang for your buck things aren't cheap over there so um when you see gratitude and you see contentment and you see satisfaction it goes to show that it is obtainable in the absence of plenty and in the absence of more so with that carl i pose a question today for our listeners how do you give thanks how do you give thanks in your life? Uh, it's the season of Thanksgiving. We've talked about the different angles of approach to how the conventional Thanksgivings have been and how we could kind of tweak it to make it more meaningful. But we want to learn from you all from across the world, from our listeners in Japan, to our listeners in South Africa, to our listeners in Pakistan and Canada and America and the whole nine yards. How do you give thanks in your respective culture, religion, or way in the home I think that's uh, beautiful for us to know so that we can share with each other these points of knowledge and enrich our minds and souls with better practices. So <clears throat> the, the, the two things that I want to follow up on ever so quickly is the storage unit thing. And they actually just built a brand new one across the street from my office. Mm -hmm. And I watch them put this up and I drive to my dry cleaners and I pass three more storage units on the way. Who's using all of these storage units and how much stuff are they storing? <laughs> it is something that, that just, just, it plagues me because I'm like, there cannot be this much stuff in the universe that we need this many places to pay somebody to mm -hmm. hold our stuff for us now i'm not going to say i'm perfect because i know i have a closet in a drawer and i've got too much junk in there and whatever else but dude how many storage units do we need in this 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 in, in the united states it's ridiculous and the other thing that i wanted to just comment on the statement that you made was that um our biggest export for the for forever it has been and and someday I'll tell you this how the the study that led to this but our biggest export is our culture and to see Canada taking on this Black Friday and I actually didn't know about the UK until just now it's painful mm -hmm. it's painful for me because that means since culture is our biggest export we're teaching people how to be greedy and that's not good. And as humans on the planet, we have to do better than that. And, and, and Carl, that's exactly when the balance between the body and soul is lost. This is an Islamic perspective to all our non-Muslim listeners. But even if you don't want to look at it in the realm of the religion, look at it in an unbiased fashion. Greed comes about when it becomes all about the body. And the more a person gets the less they become happy. They don't feel that gratitude, and hence they dive in deeper and deeper, hoping that they'll find happiness. But the more you get, the more unhappy you become because that frustration level rises. So yes, Carl, we're exporting our culture, and the culture of, uh, of Black Friday is truly greed. People are going to be pitching their tents from tomorrow, which is Wednesday. They're going to pitch their tents outside of Best Buy and all these other electronic stores, and they're going to miss that time with the kids and their families. Why? Because they want to get the best deals walking into the store. Please stop that. It's just not worth it. Human lives, your family are more important than pitching a tent and sleeping outside. With that, Carl, you know, I want to um, provoke um, our discussion for next Tuesday, inshallah, by talking about the uptick and the spike in um, sexual assaults that have been documented over a period of time that are now coming out of the closet. Um, on every level, there has been a lot of discussion politically, Hollywood, Islamic, and others um, about uh, the mistreatment uh, of our sisters in humanity that has been ongoing for so long i want to rephrase that not the mistreatment the blatant abuse of women that have been going on for so long created to be normal 
in many cultures and customs that now it's spilling over. And as much as I applaud the sisters who are coming out with their stories to bring an end to this culture of sexism where where a woman's value is nothing in the world, regardless, and this is a, we're talking about global. We're not talking about just America. We're not talking about Islam. We're not talking about the East. We're not talking about the West. This is a global problem, and we're going to dive into it next week. And I want to leave our listeners tonight with the understanding that Allah said in the Quran that, you know, Allah created both the man and the woman. And in creation, God has made both the man and woman. And he didn't make one to dominate the other and to torture the other and to belittle the other. And truly, Carl, this has gone out of hand. So, you know, wrap your thoughts about this and hopefully engage with us on the email that's written on the bottom. And next week, we're going to dive into that. So again, the question for this week is, how do you give thanks? We love to hear from you, our listeners, and we thank you for your time today. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, and with that, boys and girls, we have reached the end of another episode of Raw Islam with Imam Azhar. The question of the week, the actually two questions of the week that we want to hear from you on is, A, where do you feel safe? With all these mass shootings and with all these horrible acts taking place, where do you feel safe in society today? And of course, the new question from this week is, how do you give thanks? Is it by praying? Is it by donating? Is it by volunteering? How do you give thanks to people in your life, how do you give thanks to the Lord? I want to thank everybody for tuning in this week. I want to thank all of those on Facebook Live that joined us. I want to thank them all for all the little likes. It's fun sitting here watching this. I and want to thank and everybody uh, for tuning uh, in. And, uh, uh, <laughs> ooh, feedback. I wonder where that came from. And seeing all the little hearts and likes pop up on the screen, it's really Thank you guys so much. Feel free to join in the conversation because I am monitoring the comments. If I ever get uh, uh, fancy enough, we may be able to actually put the comments on the uh, the comments on the the page here while we go, so that it'll be live comments on the screen. But we'll see. Maybe inshallah. Uh, oh, hey, we have a comment and some likes. Look at that. Look at those likes. We like those likes. Uh, one of our listeners uh is saying that she's praying thank you he he he's praying i'm trying to read it off my phone sorry about that if i got that wrong <laughs> but he's saying he's praying f for people around the world and that's good because that's what we need and he um actually let me translate that this person is probably saying that he gives thanks by praying beautiful that's beautiful thank you so much for the comment and so until next week, ladies and gentlemen, we will be on the same, the same Imam time and in the same Imam channel, playing on Batman there a little bit. Uh, <laughs> we will say, Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum.